Hello and welcome to Bonnie's Insider, presented by Universal Primary Care, our first edition for the new academic year. Throughout the year, we'll keep you updated on all Bonnie's teams and take you behind the scenes to learn more about our student athletes, coaches, and standout alumni. Our Bonnie's are back on campus and fall seasons are underway. Along with new seasons, we also have a brand new Director of Athletics, as Joe Manhurts was officially introduced August 26th. Joe comes to Bonas from Duke, where he spent the last decade with the Blue Devils, most recently as Associate Director of Athletics. In all, he has over two decades of experience working with Power 5 programs, including stints at Ohio State and Syracuse. A native of the Rochester area and former two-sport athlete at Colgate, his arrival at Bonaventure is a return home. Let's meet our new leader of Bonnie's Athletics, Joe Manhurts. It's my honor to officially introduce to the Bonner Nation, St. Bonaventure's new athletic director, Joe Manhurts. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to stand in front of you. But to all the people that have helped get me here, I say thank you. To student athletes, I can't wait to get here and represent you and work for you, work on your behalf. We get better every day. We get better at everything we do every day. You know, you practice, you train, you get better every day. I think that goes from student athletes to the staff to myself to all of us. And so we got to be great teammates, uh, and that, that's what it's about. And so we're bringing great teammates, we bring a passion to this, and we'll be very, very good. We are so incredibly happy to welcome Joe Manhurts to the St. Bonaventure family. He brings with him Power Five credentials, having worked at Duke, The Ohio State University, and Syracuse, and he has more New York roots at Colgate and Hamilton. He is the right person to bring St. Bonaventure to the next level, and we are so happy to have him join the leadership team at St. Bonaventure. Welcome to the leadership team, Joe Manhurts. I can't wait to see all you do to continue to make the Bonnies amazing. Joe and Bonnie's fans everywhere have to be excited with what they've seen from Bonnie's soccer so far. We check in with both of our teams, beginning with the women's squad, which sees a young team on the rise following back-to-back -back wins last week to begin the season. It actually felt amazing to be out here with a great group of girls, to get my first goal as a freshman. That's actually amazing and a lot of support on the sideline from the team after I scored and on the field. Um, just the beginning. It was a little shocking because I didn't honestly think it was going to go when I thought it was going out and I felt at the same time. So getting up and seeing everyone rushing to me and seeing that the ball actually won the goal was actually amazing. A uh, really good feeling to turn around and my whole team was there to celebrate with me. It's amazing to see all of our fans on the hill, of course, um, supporting us, um, hearing them during the game, after the game, after we scored, everything was just amazing. The energy, it was just amazing. I just want to get, um, take a moment to say thank you to all the people that came here to support us and uh, for sure we felt that support in the field and we appreciate it for sure. I'm not satisfied because I want more and I think we can do better and we're going to face um, harder opponents in the future so we're just going to keep getting better and not satisfied with this performance and just keep building and keep getting better as a team. Yeah, I think one of the big problems last year was that we didn't play anyone first, we just kind of got into playing the toughest teams and now I think we'll actually be able to build up to that which will help a lot and definitely help our younger players get ready for those big games. We definitely have a bigger bench now so it's a lot easier like okay if you're tired get off the field and someone is definitely willing and able to take your spot and help out the team. If someone gets injured we have people to fill in those spots instead of just like 
hoping for the best and not having a ton of people. We were young last year, but now we have that experience and we played those really hard games, and I think that'll help a lot. I think it was great like getting into preseason like two weeks early, um, just so that we could bond as a team. And before everybody got here, just kind of focus on soccer, focus on our game. We have 18 games. We have a lot of good talent coming in this year. It's going to be the best season that we're going to have so far. Playing together with more games that are about this season will help us kind of mesh together. I think we have some great leadership, although we have small numbers in our upper class. I think they make up for it in the style that they play and the way that they lead by example. Our seniors and our fifth years and juniors really kind of mesh this team together and allow us to have great leadership on the field. We're honestly sisters. It's amazing coming here, like all the incoming freshmen. I feel like when I was a freshman, I was super included in everything and I'm just so lucky to find everybody that's so nice, especially in such a competitive environment. The Bonnie's men's soccer team is just getting its 2021 season underway. Like the women, the men's team returns to a traditional fall season, including a complete Atlantic 10 slate following last season's league-only condensed schedule. Get to know the Bonnie's in this season preview, presented by Energy Mark. Our boys are happy to be back. We're happy to have them back to get two weeks of training and then playing games and the boys getting to know each other. That's always a positive, whatever sport you play. To get preseason this year, it's going to help us going forward. It's going to bring us together going forward. The way we finished last season, uh, the last two games wasn't wasn't good enough for anybody involved in our program, the players, you know, the staff. That it leaves a bad taste in our mouth, and I hope that that pushes us this season to to push harder, to be better every single day. This is college soccer. You can have a good team. It doesn't mean that you can win. We need to do the little things right in order to give ourselves a chance to to win every game. We've struggled to score goals last year. We started off well scoring goals and then it dried up. We put ourselves in bad positions and now we're always climbing back, trying to fight back and trying to come back in games. I think this year we have guys that can put the ball in the back of the net. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be tiki-taka soccer happening. We gotta grind games and, and it may look terrible, but in the end, we just want results. And that's what we're looking for this year. For me and, and, for, and for our program, it, it's always, can we get in the A-10 playoffs? Over the years, it, it doesn't matter whether you, you were the top team in, in the conference. When you get in the A-10 conference uh, tournament, anybody can win. Our first goal, our first step is to get in there. And then I think, Sky's the limit for anybody that can win. We have to lean on our, on our forwards. We got guys that I think that can put the ball in the back of the net. We're going to win or lose based on how they do. And they know that. The burden is on their shoulders. And, and if they can put the ball in the back of the net, we'll grind it out. We'll look for results that way. I mean, our freshman, Keegan Dawson, has done well. Center midfielder. We have uh, Matthew Rubble, who's, who's also doing well. Those guys have surprised us. And, and we hope that they can keep taking that step and keep getting better each and every day and each and every game. Well, when you have five grad students and four or five seniors that have played a lot of games, you know, that, that obviously helps. Experience in, at this level is always going to go a long way. And now we have young kids, you know, sophomores, good freshman class coming in. They can learn from them, uh, not just this year, but going forward for their career as well. We got a goalkeeper that's played a ton of games. You got Jazz there. And we have more depth there than we've, we've ever had um, since I've been here. We can push through injuries and their experience at this level will always help us and help the young guys get better going forward. We just want support, you know, we want people to come out here and support us. Uh, we want fans to come out here, we want the community to come out here and support us. Because coming to play here is not, it's not easy for any team. And to have fans that are cheering for us um, will, it will just um, make the atmosphere better. It will, make, it will just give us the extra edge um, when we're tired, you know, when we need that extra boost. So we hope to see um, families, grand, grandpa, grandma, kids, we want to see all of them out here. You know, it's been uh, really good to get back on campus. I'm really excited. We have a strong group, a lot of depth in the group, and uh, it's been going really well. Intensity, we're doing double days, so we're really getting down and putting the work in. When you see those preseason games, you get to know your team a lot better, get to know the new guys, and we get to build that core group. It really prepares us for that conference. It's a little different than last season. We kept a lot of the core group, and we're adding a lot of great players, another few additions that are going to really help us out offensively and defensively. I think this year should be a good one. We have a lot to prove. It's unfinished business for sure. I have to be a leader. I have to go out there and not only prove myself, but help the team aspect. And I think uh, focusing on 
my performance individually will definitely help the team. I know the chemistry is something we've lacked before, and I think this year with the guys we've had for the past two, three seasons, I think it'll be really, it'll work really well. All of us have been training for this for the whole summer. Coming back for preseason, the two-day sessions, we're just trying to get some sort of momentum going and into a conference, into our season. We're just trying to find a chemistry between our team right now, trying to find each other and find out what our tendencies and how we work with each other. We're trying something new in the way that we play. And all that preparation is definitely going to help us for this tough season ahead of us. And this team, everyone listens to each other. That's the thing I love about this team is we're a group of guys that want to get better. That respect doesn't come from being an upperclassman. It's, it's just always there. Uh, once you earn your spot on the team, then people just know that. We have great depth on the bench now with this new class coming in. I think this could be a great season for us. We have a great schedule and everything's just seeming to go in our way so far. So if we can get through the season and do well and perform, I think we can do very well. Nothing I want to do right now is more important to me than helping the team. And right now I'm not looking at anything personally, but we want to make playoffs. We had a shot at it last year and we didn't get it. So we're definitely back and trying to get that this year. Our goals are high. But we always felt like we've underachieved a little bit. Everything in this conference, is, it's just such small margins. That's just cleaning up things here and you know not making mistakes and everything like that. And once we do that, we think that our ceiling's pretty high. We have all the pieces, we have all the talent, we have the players and we have the coaching. Uh, it's, it's really just cleaning the small things up and, and trying to really kind of get that edge and winning mentality. When you're on a team in college, you, you literally become brothers. Like I, I know way too much information about every single one of these guys. You just become so cohesive um, just on and off the field. You know exactly what everyone's feeling, what their what their mood is just by the way they're walking, the way they're playing, and if something's going wrong with them, you can tell just on the field. It's a good group of guys and, and we just have to continue to rely on each other to get things done. Good luck to both of our soccer teams this season. We look forward to some exciting action all season long right here at the Mara Athletics Complex. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, we'll bring you the story of the first victory of the season for Coach Schmidt. You're watching Bonnie's Insider, presented by Universal Primary Care. Schultz is always at your service, ensuring your vehicle gets the maintenance it requires. Now, with modern, touchless options across the entire auto care experience. Speak with a service advisor on the phone or at one of our newly envisioned service centers. Pay invoices online or via mobile app. And drive home in confidence knowing Schultz only permits limited personnel access to your vehicle. Exceeding expectations is our mission. That's why the next generation of auto care is already here at Schultz. Western New York is known for energy innovation. Today, Energy Mark is leading the way for the next generation of renewable energy. At Energy Mark, we help power Western New York homes and businesses with low-cost, locally produced energy, including renewables like solar and wind power. Energy Mark, the official energy supplier to the Buffalo Bills. Connect your account to Energy Mark at buylocalenergy.com. Welcome back to Bonnie's Insider, presented by Universal Primary Care. While all Bonnie's fans know about the work of head coach Marv Schmidt on the court, making St. Bonaventure one of the A-10's top programs and a preseason top 25 team, Coach is also doing great work away from the court as well. He serves on the national board for Coaches vs. Cancer, and this year hosted the 716 Classic at Bartlett Country Club, raising funds to go toward the American Cancer Society and research to find a cure. This is a really important thing that we're doing here. And it, it's just not, not me, it's just not Bonaventure, it, it's, it's Western New York. But I really appreciate the support that we've got. It's been amazing to me to take a Monday uh, to come to Bonaventure and, and support this is, is really, really appreciated. Cancer impacts all of our lives, whether it's your direct family member, a neighbor, a coworker, it's everywhere. And it wasn't until it hit home when my dad was diagnosed in January of 2019. And to honor him and to help spread awareness, I want to be involved. And so when Coach called me and asked if I would be a part of this event, I was beyond honored to make it happen. It's incredible what he's trying to do here in Western New York because it really is important and he can make a difference. The funds raised tonight for, at this event can help fund the much needed research 
that's needed to give a better quality of life, to offer better treatment options, to be able to give patients like my dad hope because his kind of cancer was not curable. And when he received his diagnosis, there was no hope for even family members. And so I want to be able to help do something. And if by sharing our story and his story and honoring him gives me that opportunity, I'll talk to anybody. It's your money, it's your support that's gonna make a difference in the research and finding a cure for cancer. And that's what this whole thing is all about. It's finding a cure and getting all these young researchers that are so brilliant to be able to come out. But they can't do that unless they have grants, unless they have money. You are the difference makers. And you, you know, sometimes we, we don't understand that, that every little bit counts. You know, and if we can raise 50 to to $100,000, it's a huge amount of money to be able to put forth here. Who doesn't know somebody who's had cancer that they love and they're close to them? And it's a horrible disease. People forget about it, they miss the COVID, it's still there. And I just think it says a lot about who Mark is, what this program is about, what the Bonaventure community is about, frankly, to come and have a great day, but do something really great with a great day. I also think it says a lot about the Bonaventure community at large. What makes this place special is the people. And there's no better people on the planet than Bonaventure people. And you, today is another example of what that means. That's what Bonnies do. They look out for each other. They want to help. They want to whatever it is in whatever way. It's why there's so much love for the university. And it's just a real exciting time to get everybody together in one room and just help each other out. A big thank you to not only Coach Schmidt, but former Bonnie's coaches Jim Sadlin and Jim Barron for their work with Coaches vs. Cancer as well. Coach Barron was honored with the Jim Sadlin Inspiration Award, named for Coach Sadlin's decades of work with Coaches vs. Cancer. We're proud of all their efforts. This year's tournament raised over $40,000 in donations, and donations are still being counted. Switching gears back to Bonnie's fall seasons getting underway, the golf team continued their dominance at the Little Three Championship, defeating Canisius and Niagara on Tuesday for their sixth straight Little Three crown. We caught up with grad students Christian Chapman, who tied the program record with a first round 66 on the way to winning the tournament, and Danny Giannini, who finished second after shooting a second round 67. It felt good to, uh, to win again this year and um, play well as a team just to start out the year with a win is always cool and see the teams playing well and there's some low rounds out there by Chap and Lacongo so that was that was fun to see. Love to get that win. I got off to a decent start. I mean I just kind of played steady. Of course was kind of out there to get. I don't feel like I really made many mistakes. I just kind of kept it in front of me. Knowing that it was a course basically none of us had ever seen before made it I guess more enjoyable because we went in blind, whereas in years past, at least for me, we've seen all the courses before, so we kind of know what to do, know that we're probably going to play well, but when you go in kind of blind and have no idea what to expect and you end up playing well, that's a, it's a good feeling uh, going forward for us and what, what should be a phenomenal season. Great job, guys. We're looking forward to a strong season from Bonnie's Golf. That's all the time we have for this week's episode. We'll be back on September 17th for another episode of Bonnie's Insider, presented by Universal Primary Care. Until next time, thanks for joining us, and go Bonnie's!